Well, what's up, everybody? Chester ARP oh, Church Devotional Podcast. Clint Davis, your host. What's up? We get started. John chapter 11. Here we go. Choose each winding path our trip. Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living breath. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today as we jump in. John chapter 11, beginning in verse 28. Jesus talking to Martha and Mary. And this is what we find. When she had said this, that's when Martha had said, I know you are the Christ uh, who is coming into the world. When she, Martha, said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to Jesus, came to where Jesus was, excuse me, and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said to her, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could he not have, who have opened the bond, eyes of the blind man also kept this man from dying? Now, Martha comes and tells her sister, Jesus is here and he's asking for you. And presumably Jesus is asking for her. And so Mary gets up, runs out of the house. And when she runs out of the house, she goes to meet Jesus. He's still outside the village. He's not in Bethany yet. And she runs to meet Jesus. When she gets there, she says to him very point very bluntly and very pointedly if you if you had been here he would not have died in her grief in her honesty in her pain in her openness she says if you had only been here he would not have died she's stating a reality but she's also pointing a in a sense she she's pointing i think a pointing a finger to some degree at jesus it's not that she is coming at him with this guns ablazing, but she's in her grief saying if you had been here, remember Jesus was called for uh, prior. He, he was called before Lazarus had died. Lazarus had been dead for four days, so at least six days, probably a week before they called Jesus, and Jesus delayed before he came. And so Martha, I mean Mary, excuse me, is saying, "Listen, if you had only been here, you would have saved him. He he wouldn't have died." Now, she's just stating a fact. That's her belief. That's her understanding. That's who she is. There's a closeness here, right? The Jews who are with her run out there with her. They're all there grieving and a party of people there mourning with her, consoling her. They run with her thinking she's going to the tomb. They want to be with her. They don't want her to be alone. And so they go, and we understand how that works. And so they go to be with her, and they witness this interchange between her and her Lord, her and Jesus. When Jesus saw her weeping, we're told, and he saw the, those weeping along with her, because the loss of Lazarus was great, and so you had the, the the sisters weeping the loss, you had friends weeping the loss, but you also had right others there weeping for the sisters and the friends. That's how it works. When someone dies, you, you cry for your loss, but you also cry for other people who in their pain are having to deal with the loss. And so you, Jesus is deeply moved in his spirit, and he's troubled. He's troubled by this. I think it's important to pause here and say death is unnatural. Death is not natural part of life. We talk about that sometimes. Oh, it's just the natural progress of life. It's the natural progression of life. You get to the point where you die. And in a sense, from our experience, it is. It's what everybody endures. It's what everybody goes through. But in the scheme of creation, it's not natural. You were not created to die. I was not created to die. Lazarus was not created to die. Martha was not created to die. Mary was not created to die. We were not created to die. We were not created to to deal with death. Death is the result of the fall. It's a punishment. It's a curse that came onto mankind, onto you and me, as a result of sin, our sin. And so when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God brought death to them. That was the curse. They weren't created to die. It's not natural as part of who we are in our creation. We are created to live forever with God. 
to live in relationship with God into eternity. And so this is a hard thing to go through. It's difficult. It's painful. It hurts. And Jesus is troubled by it because he's troubled in his heart because it bothers him to see his beloved creation, his beloved children have to go through this. God takes no pleasure in our death. That's why Jesus rose from the dead. That's why Jesus conquered death, so that we could live forever with him. He takes no pleasure in our death. You know, think about it this way. A a parent uh, should not take pleasure in punishing a child, right? A child is loved by a parent in in a true situation, in a normal situation. A parent loves a child. A parent has to discipline. A parent has to punish when the child goes astray. But the parent should take no pleasure in that. If the parent takes pleasure in that, then there's something wrong with the parent, right? We understand that in in our society. There's something wrong with the parent if the parent takes pleasure in disciplining and punishing the child. It it hurts the parent's heart. They have to do it. It's necessary, but they don't take pleasure in it. God does not take pleasure in your death. God does not take pleasure in death. God does not take pleasure in uh, avenging death, right, on people, especially his elect, his beloved. He, He... it hurts him, but he has to do it because of our sin. We, we deserve that. He can't live in a relationship with sinful people. That's why Jesus conquered death, and so that's why he sent Jesus. And so Jesus comes into the world, but Jesus is deeply moved. He's troubled by it, and then we're told here, when they asked where have you laid him, they took him to the tomb, and Jesus wept. And the Jews said, see how he loved him. And Jesus wept for the death of Lazarus. Jesus wept for the pain that Martha and Mary are going through. I don't think when Jesus weeps here, sometimes we say that Jesus weeps for his loss. He loved Lazarus. Yes, I think he did love Lazarus, but I think there's much more going on here. Jesus weeps at the reality of the pain that Martha and Mary are suffering because of Lazarus' death. Jesus weeps at the reality of death itself on mankind because um, Jesus knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. I don't think Jesus is going, oh, I miss him so much, and I'm going to miss him. I think there's a human side to Jesus that does miss Lazarus. But I don't think that's really what's driving the weeping here. I think what's driving the weeping here is how Jesus has compassion for you and me, and he sees your tears, he hears your tears, he goes through this, he hears your wailing, he goes through this, he understands that pain, and he weeps because It's unnatural. It's not what is necessary. It hurts him to have to discipline his children, but he also knows, right, it's necessary, but he also knows he's going to provide a way out. But Jesus' pain is with you. It identifies with you and your pain and me and my pain and his people in their pain. And so he weeps. He wept for Mary and Martha. He wept for Lazarus and what they had to endure and the pain they were suffering, he felt for them, and he feels for you. That's what Hebrews says. He knows every emotion, and he feels it, and he knows it, and he loves you in the midst of it. You guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll end there. Tomorrow we'll pick up with the resurrection. See you soon. See you. Bye. You carry me close to your heart.